Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I am really loving these roundtable podcasts. I hope you, dear listener, are as well. And so if you are, do us a favor. Subscribe, rate, and review the Art of Passive Income podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit and with me on our esteemed round table i've got from landopia.com eric peterson eric how are you i'm doing good thanks and it's always nice to hear a female voice on the round table rachel mueller from Hello. canopyland.com right rachel that's correct canopylandholdings.com canopylandholdings.com and not to be overshadowed tate Litchfield Frontier Properties USA.com. He's got a he's got a nice sort of sunburn, sunburn from, sunburn from catching fan. like like monster fish. Tate, how are you? I'm great. Got, happy to be back. Bummed I missed last week, but uh, that's the beauty of this business, Mark. Right? We no, I mean you're off. catching fish and you're doing deals. Yeah, I mean, how can you complain about that, right? I, you've you, honestly you've lost all complaining privileges. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm happy to be back and. Uh, I too am finding uh, these podcasts to be very, very inspiring. It's funny because I listen to them after I've already recorded them. So, yeah, yeah. So I'm leaving for Vegas on Thursday afternoon. I'm really looking forward to the Vegas boot camp. Seventy people, Tate Litchfield. That's awesome. I mean, it's Vegas, <laughs> Vegas, baby. Like, <laughs> if you're ever wanting to come to a boot camp, it's <clears throat> Vegas. It should be the Vegas boot camp. I mean, it's um, fantastic. Not that the other ones aren't amazing. And I'm a little biased because this is my hometown boot camp. But uh, we got some awesome stuff planned, don't we, Mark? We really do. I'm, I'm really excited for the VIPs. That Those breakout sessions are awesome. Um, what, I, what I really love about boot camp is the fact that everybody leaves on Sunday crystal clear. They're motivated. They know exactly what they need to do. Um, all the land investing clouds dissipate. Everything becomes clear. They get all their questions answered. And then, you know, the community becomes solidified because now instead of seeing, you know, Eric Peterson on Facebook, you meet the real Eric Peterson, right? You, re you meet the real Tate Litchfield, Rachel Mueller. Like, it's really cool how it becomes so much more real for people in the room, especially for the people that haven't done a whole lot of deals. When they talk to somebody that's done like, you know, 50 deals that year and they're doing deals in real time and asking them, you know, these specific questions about how they're doing it, it's... It's really uh, phenomenal to, to witness. So before, the, uh, before our, our podcast started recording, uh, we were talking about building a buyer's list. And so I thought it'd be a good roundtable discussion to talk about how we build our buyer's lists um, and what we do and how we sort of cultivate that and, and, you know, and keep growing it and... Um, <clears throat> And, and really, you know, having this sort of relationship, if you will, with our buyers list. So I want to start with Eric Peterson. Eric, how do you build your buyers list? Um, well, I currently do a few different things. Um, and actually, I'm always trying to improve it. But um, first of all, anybody that contacts me from an ad that I have out there, um, I will add them to my buyers list automatically. Um, then I've got forms on my website that uh, people can fill out and join my buyers list that way. Um, and then the much less uh, often case is me just, um, you know, if I'm talking to somebody on the phone, getting their email that way um, and entering it into my buyers list. Um, so those are probably the three main areas. Um, well, actually Facebook too. I do get a few, um, emails there to add to my buyers list as well. Very cool. Rachel Mueller, what about you? Yeah, I mean, I think Eric kind of nailed it. Um, definitely anytime you get some sort of an email, whether it's from Craigslist, Land and Farm, if you're communicating with someone on Facebook, as soon as I get that email, I add them to the list, let them know, hey, you're going to stay up to date, new deals, all that fun stuff. Um, we have a few pop-ups on our webpage too that prompt you to sign up, so you can't really run away from it. When you first log on to the website, it's there. When you go to a property, it's there. When you're about to log off, it's there. Just letting you know, you know, you don't want to miss out. 
And, and then also phone calls. If somebody just cold calls you, getting that email so you can follow up and keep going that way. Fantastic. Tate Litchfield. You know, similar approach as everyone else. Um, it's funny because I hear some people say, you know, that they're going to ask for permission to people, for people to go on their buyers list. They'll say, hey, Mark, thanks for your email. Would you like me to add you to our buyers list? Um, I don't do that. If you contact me, you make it onto my buyers list. That's a privilege. And that's how my buyers list has gotten so big. And I know once, Mark, you told me you live by the philosophy where you either, you know, subs you either buy or you die, right? You get off the list. If you don't want to receive my emails anymore, unsubscribe. What do I care, right? So I, buy or unsubscribe. Yeah, buy or unsubscribe. I mean, maybe, yeah, and it's worked. Um, so I consider it a privilege for people to be on our buyers list. And uh, I'm doing a lot of the same things everybody else is. My question is, besides Facebook or Craigslist or the, the traditional methods, is anybody doing anything else to build that buyers list? Eric Peterson, anything, uh, any new ninja geeky tactics that you're kind of hiding underneath your really cool Beats earphones? <laughs> um, no, I, I am, uh, I guess, kind of working on some things, um, you know, thinking through some ideas and different things of that nature, but none of that is really implemented yet. Um, you know, I, I guess one thing we might want to talk about is just what we do with um, those people that are on our list and how much we contact them and, um, you know, different things of that nature as well. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's a minimum once a week. What about, what about you, Eric? How often are you emailing them? Uh, once a week, they get a, a investment of the week is what I call it um, from me. Um, I also, anybody that gets added either by me or they join my list, uh, they'll get an autoresponder series, um, walking them through some, you know, land buying mistakes kind of thing. Um, so they'll get that. Um, and I'm working on some other autoresponder series as well. Rachel Mueller, what about you? Yeah, we've got some fun Facebook integrations that we're working on actually to try and push some more emails. Uh, but we also are working on a free download, kind of like you have, you know, three biggest fatal land buying mistakes. Uh, we're working on something similar of our own to try and encourage more people to be signing up. And then uh, same thing, when they do sign up, we have a series of autoresponders that kind of pushes them through and encourages them to keep checking back for deals and things like that. Fantastic. Tate? Yeah, similar approach. I'm I would say we contact our buyers list anywhere from, you know, two to three times a week. Uh, a lot of it's uh, obviously with our deal of the week, but sometimes we'll send them helpful tips or, um, you know, just cool things that we found uh, articles on land or whatever we find helpful. And we think that they might enjoy reading. So I think that the most important thing with your buyers list is top of mind awareness, right? Uh, I want to be in their inbox on a weekly basis. So even if they're not buying, interested in buying land right now, when they go to delete that email, they still see Tate Litchfield, Frontier Properties. So that's kind of the purpose of the, the, the multiple touch points in a week because, I mean, what's the average attention span of, a, of an American right now? My, mine is two seconds. Exactly. I'm like a, yeah, I'm like, a, I like, I'm like a ferret on a, on a double cappuccino. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I think all of us are that way, right? Like, so it's important that uh, my name stays fresh in their memory. So that's why we have the multiple touch points. And yeah, we're working on the Facebook bot and all of that too, to just make it easier for them to communicate. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, my, my attention span has gotten so bad that I'm ruining like date night with my wife. <laughs> so, so last night, like we, like we pour like a glass of wine we're going to go watch a movie together in the bedroom, close the door, three kids, good night, right? So I'm saying good night to the kids. Well, sure enough, my son has his laptop open. Well, I, that's my 16, by the way, so don't judge. I could see, I could see you getting judgy, Tate. He's 16. <laughs> and he's watching Breaking Bad, right? And next thing you know, I'm watching it with him. And this goes on for like 10 minutes. I go back into the room. My wife's like, I thought we were having date night, like, like it's ruined. I ruined it. Right. 
And I'm like, I got distracted. <laughs> it's breaking bad. No one can blame you for that. Well, and you know what? And that's, that's why, you know, papers weren't filed last night either. So that's good. Yeah. You filed but the extension. I, I, yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I digress. I digress. So from a, from a technical standpoint, is every, what's everybody using actually to, to execute on creating, let's say, the squeeze page, collecting that email, right? And then how are they actually creating that autoresponder series and emailing them out? For example, are they using an Aweber or a MailChimp or a Constant Contact and why? So Eric, what about you? Okay. Um, well, when I started, I used MailChimp. Um, I've recently switched over to ConvertKit um, and I'm loving that. Um, so my what, what do you love about it compared to MailChimp? Um, well, first of all, I'm, I'm just getting better open rates. Um, I, with MailChimp, I had a very, um, let's say professional email that I would send out with images and logos and all kinds of stuff. Convert kit. I'm just sending texts. Um, but the, the tagging ability to kind of segment my list and start to define different groups of buyers um, is a lot easier to use than a MailChimp. It's not that you can't do it, um, but it's just a lot more functional, I feel like, in ConvertKit. So, so yeah, I mean, for that reason, I'm just, I'm really liking it a lot. Rachel Mueller, how about you? Uh, I'm really happy we're talking about this actually because recently I've been deciding if I want to keep MailChimp uh, for that reason, low open rates it seems like. Um, it works though as far as organization and web integration. Uh, so we have our list with MailChimp and then we actually have something called MailMunch that's integrated into our WordPress website and that's what prompts all of those pop-ups that you can customize and it kind of funnels into the buyers list. Um, and then the autoresponders through MailChimp. But again, like Eric mentioned, it's pretty snazzy. Um, it's HTML emails, and I think it might just be too much. For well, I mean, what we HTML do. emails are getting um, filtered out, right? Yeah. Like Google's got the filter. Like if it's HTML email, oh, it looks like it's coming from Nordstrom. That's a promotion, right? Um, we only send text emails mm -hmm. out. Um, and we use Aweber, but Tate... Uh, what about like the actual tech to get the, the, uh, the email, right? And then yeah. put that into Aweber. So we're using Aweber and then we link in, you know, lead pages, you know, often it'll go out as a text in Aweber and you'll click on a, you know, a tell me more button and that will take you to a lead page. Uh, from that lead page, you can also, you know, purchase the property or get more information, look at current inventory. There's a little video on it typically. And our open rate is, uh, you know, knock on wood, it's fantastic. We have a really, really great open rate. Um, and for us, we've done a lot of testing and I've noticed that you got to have a catchy headline and you got to have a good photo. Mm -hmm. Other than that, um, you know, I think that some people are going to view it as just spam or another junk mail, but somebody who's really looking or really interested, uh, you got about one second before they decide if it's trash or if it's something worth pursuing and, and getting more information on. So we spend a lot of time and effort on making sure our headlines are, uh, are catchy and unique and, you know, that there's some sort of call to action. in them. You know what I think is so important is those first two sentences yeah. in the email because when I'm like looking on my iPhone and I'm, and I'm looking at my email, I only kind of review the first two sentences and then I kind of make that quick decision. Do I want to read more or not? So Eric, how much thought are you putting into those first two sentences? Or are you just, you know, writing? Well, my opening line is, is actually always the same right now. Just me reintroducing myself, my company, and you know, letting them know that this is this week's deal of the week. Um, so, I mean, that's that's maybe something to think about. Um, but that's kind of the way I've done it up till now. Um, and then after that, I mean, once you get past that first sentence, obviously, um, you know, we start talking about that particular deal, um, and 
Yeah, I mean, try to keep that those opening sentences um, maybe a little lighter, more kind of storytelling, kind of choose your path kind of perspective. I don't know. Um, so I do a little bit of that, but you know, maybe it's time to rethink that opening sentence. I, I almost feel like it should be like, you know, completely like you have to open it. First two sentences, like, you know, I was bleeding from my side, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> right. Like what? I would click on that. Yeah. Right, right. Like w- <laughs> tell me the story. This story is crazy. I'm bleeding from my side, you know, and then you're like, just kidding. But actually, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe you start losing your readership by, right. you know, <laughs> by clickbaiting it. But it's like, you gotta, you gotta get that attention in those first two sentences. Um, Rachel, how often are you thinking about that when you're uh, crafting? Every time that we compose an email. I mean, I agree with you in that people nowadays, they're checking their phone for emails more than they are desktop computer. And in iPhone, especially, you have just that like five words or seven words of a preview. And that's kind of the determining moment if somebody's going to click on it or they're just going to archive, archive it or you know delete it. So you really want something that is going to be attention grabbing and want them, to, will them to click on it and go further. Tate, what about you? Same. You know, it's kind of the priority of the email. Uh, everything else is really easy and really quick to produce and, and create. But uh, I, sp- I would say we spend the most, most time on that first little intro, make the property sound really desirable and really unique and highlight some of its, uh, some of its positive attributes. And so we, we, we hit that first intro really, really hard. Yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's critical. Um, Eric, did you ever tell us how, you, how you're getting the actual, what tech your piece you're using to actually get the, the email? No, no. Like and we that's, use lead pages. Rachel's using a WordPress plugin. What are you doing? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So, uh, you know, the, the email responses I get to my ads, whether that be Landed Farm or Craigslist or wherever, Facebook, um, from there, after that first response, they go into Pipe Drive. And I have a um, zap running from Pipe Drive that adds those emails to my um, buyers list. So geeky. I love the automation. <laughs> if you don't know what a zap is, it's zapier.com. It's like my favorite website. It's um, pretty awesome. I'm on there every day. What can I automate yeah. today? Like, literally, like you should be thinking, what can I automate today? Hmm. Um, you know, it's, I, I think it's, it's interesting, though, is that as open rates start going lower and lower, um, because of the filtering, because of the fact that we all are inundated today with too much email, what are you thinking about for the future as far as how are you going to continue building that rapport, building that relationship with a buyer's list that might look, you know, very different or, or in a different medium? Um, because really it's the only thing we own is that buyer's list, but how do you get them to take, get more engagement? I mean, Tate, what do you think? I think it's going to go to kind of bots. I think that people are going to want more live chat and um, you know, rather than responding to an email and waiting an hour or two for an instant response, I think it's in the future. You're going to have a chat now, integration button where they can click on it and chat with a live representative about said property or or whatever question they have so i think that's going to be part of the future you know we see it similar on like facebook messenger and some of the bots out there but i think somehow in the future we're going to have to integrate that into email format i don't know maybe that's just my theory yeah my my plug of the the week is the land geek bot Yep. Go on, go on the landgeek.com and, and subscribe. You'll see, you'll see how geeky it can get. Exactly. I mean, yeah. people want instant answers nowadays. They don't want to wait five hours. And, you know, I think that you can apply that fast response time to just about any aspect of this business and you're going to see results. You know, when people contact mm-hmm. you say, Hey, I want more info. Are you the person that responds the next day or do you respond within an hour or two? Yeah. Rachel Mueller, what about you? What do you think the future is? I completely agree with Tate. Um, We have a web chat on our website. I think Sean mentioned last week and it works like a charm. Um, 
people just really want that communication then and now, you know, everyone's just glued to their phones. And if they're asking a question, they're interested right then. And the sooner you can get back to them, the better you're going to see those results, the better results you're going to see. Yeah. My kids are so glued to their phones now that I text them. I'm sitting right next to them watching a movie and I just text them. How, what do you think of the movie? <laughs> so I don't, we don't need to talk to each other anymore. Just kidding. I'm, 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 I'm the dad that's like, they, they're like complaining about me. Like, all oh, you're, you're so strict. Cause like we take their phones away for the week. They can use them on the weekends. Um, except, except for the 16 year old watching Breaking Bad. That's a laptop. All right. Eric Peterson, what about you? What's the future? Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think, I think it's interesting. The idea of, you know, some integration of some kind of live chat through email, something like that. Um, but, you know, I mean, I just, I'm always surprised by, you know, where technology takes us, you know? Um, so I, we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, wouldn't it be great if you could do like an Amazon Dash button, but instead of buying wow. like Thai detergent, it's yeah. buy a piece of property, right? Or contact Frontier Properties, get this property, just tap that button. It automatically, you know, creates like a chat or I don't know, something like yeah. that. Um, just put it up on their refrigerator. You know, you send every every prospect a button. It's not a bad idea, actually. Kind of cool, actually. It's not, you know, have like an Amazon <laughs> Echo sort of uh integration you know enable buy land skill and then deal of the week this week is from frontier properties it's 99 dollars down it's 249 a month in beautiful nevada would you like to learn more and then they'll, like, they'll say yes like they wait and then it, it goes connecting and then it like calls you yeah and then it'd be disappointed if you got voicemail though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, or a non-English speaker. Yeah. Right. You know. So, um, but the future is interesting. And I, I think, I think we're all kind of missing out on a huge opportunity right now with Facebook live. Um, and, you know, making these sort of 45 second sound bite videos that just are super quick, super actionable where you say, hey, it's Eric Peterson, Landopia.com. I don't know if you know that I'm a, you know, a land seller, but my prices are too hard to believe. Like $249 down, $249 a month. If you want to learn more, go to Landopia.com. Um, click here. And just for you know, subscribing, I'm going to send you this uh, you know, special gift um, called The Best Tips by Frontier Properties and Land Geek. Something like that. I don't know, but it's gotta be 45 seconds because like we've been mentioning anything longer, you're going to lose them. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's gotta be a really clear value and it's a really clear call to action. Um, and I also think YouTube, we're not talking about enough either as far as, uh, getting the Google juice, um, with, you know, the, you know, these keywords like, you know, land investing, wholesale land, owner finance land, those types of things that people might be looking for as well. Rachel Mueller, what are your thoughts? I love that. Uh, we haven't jumped into the Facebook live, but we do use YouTube um, for a lot of our properties, especially the more expensive ones. We'll have videos and flower videos that are on there and we link to them from all over and you get more subscribers. I mean, people are everywhere and they're funneling in from so many different places. You wouldn't believe. Yeah. I mean, the key is you, you, you got to get them off of the, those channels into your email list, but mm -hmm. even because of the traffic, I think, I think it's a better, a better way to do it. Um, and I think people, nobody reads anymore, right? Video killed the radio star. Tate, am I off on this? Totally right. I mean, that's why we maybe what was about a year and a half, two years ago, we started integrating videos into all of our deal little weeks. That way you can watch a video about the property rather than read. So, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Video definitely killed the radio star. So yeah, don't underestimate the power of, of, video marketing and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. My, my favorite automation tip right now is to take um, like a blog post. Like let's say that, you know, Eric updates his WordPress site with a deal of the week, right. And puts it on there as a listing. Well, lumen5.com will take that listing and automate it into it. It'll make it a video and you can quickly edit the video in like five seconds 
and then upload it into Facebook and YouTube and, and then it'll, you know, you have a call to action at the end. Learn more at FrontierPropertiesUSA.com or whatever it is. Landopia.com, CanopyLandHoldings.com. You know, so uh, L-U-M-E-N, the number five.com. I'm, I'm loving it. So Eric Peterson, we're at that point now in the podcast where I want your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can improve their businesses, improve their lives. And most importantly, come back on Tuesday and listen to another round table podcast. No pressure, Eric Peterson. <laughs> All right. Well, I've got one and I, I hope you haven't mentioned it before. Um, it's a book. It's called the conversion code by Chris Smith. Um, been listening to it. I'm not finished with it, but uh, really enjoying the book. It's full of um, great content, talks a lot about Facebook and using Facebook to create your funnels and um, different techniques about advertising on Facebook and, um, you know, just, just basically getting people on your list and uh, working that. And um, it's just, it's, uh, it's been very informative. Interesting. I, about the author. We have to get this guy on the podcast. How did you find yeah. this guy? Yeah. I just uh, came across it in Audible and thought I'd give it a shot. Wow. Chris Smith. Curator. Wow. I think this guy knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like I said, I'm enjoying it. So what's your biggest takeaway so far? Um, you know what? I think uh, I've been listening to it in the car and, you know, just in little pieces here and there. And I really think I need to go back through and listen to parts of it over again, where um, a lot of the Facebook stuff has been really interesting to me as kind of um, Facebook is becoming kind of bigger and bigger with what we're doing. Um, so where he's talking about all his different Facebook technique techniques, I, that's probably been the biggest takeaway so far. Interesting. Rachel Mueller, what's your tip of the week? My tip of the week, I guess it kind of rolls into what we were saying. You know, everyone, especially my, me included, uh, we're all glued to our phones and our technology. And it's so exciting too now with the amount of leads that we're getting rolling in, you know, we're on Facebook and we're messaging people. And I'll look at the clock and realize that I've been on my computer and haven't looked away in like two hours and my eyes are burning and I haven't had any water and I'm dying and I need to take a break. And so I have this uh, little Chrome plugin extension. It's called I care, I think. And it uh, basically tells you, you can set it up for how often you want it to remind you to look away from the computer, take a break, stand up, stretch. Um, and then I have an app on my phone um, that's a water reminder. So you drink enough water during the day. Um, Cause those are two super important things to keep yourself healthy and going. And I've been loving those. Rachel, why don't you just do what I do and get the treadmill desk and have a big jug of water right next to you. <laughs> Cause the, if you're walking all day, you'll get thirsty. You'll have to drink or you'll pass out. That's true. <laughs> so, you know, my tip for you is trekdesk.com, T R E K desk.com. And the can way I, I bought this was, uh, with me? Oh, now she's got to bring up Europe. I forgot. I know. Sorry. I had to I rub mean, that one in. That, that's, that's Rachel Mueller's drop the mic moment. Oh, really? <laughs> why don't you go, why don't you live in your garage, Mark, while I go see the world? <laughs> And I'll be drinking Evian, by the way. So have you and Sean discussed like the, the, the plan and how that's going to work? And Yeah, we're working on it. Um, our first stop is Valencia, Spain. And we are going to be there hopefully for about a month. We, you know, this is going to be a working trip more than a vacation. You know, we want to basically take our lives and kind of move them overseas and see if we can really run this business while we're living outside of the box. So our goals are Spain, Prague, and then maybe a few places in between. We'll see where the wind takes us. Well, if you need tips, Tate's actually, you know, done deals overseas. Yeah. So, um, 
you know, the awesome. logistics of it, the logistics today are really not so bad between no. simplify all and, um, you know, limited power of attorney and all that t- stuff. And, and actually having like a, uh, a virtual mailbox, sure. super, super easy. Um, all right. Great tip. Great tip. Uh, Tate Litchfield, what's Alrighty. your tip of the week? So my tip of the week's uh, an app that I started using recently. And I think everybody knows I'm a big believer on kind of like daily rituals. I'm a firm, I'm firm on the practice makes permanent. And there's certain things in this business that you need to do every single day in order to see the growth and success that you determine you want. And so I've, I've often been a fan of kind of just a pen and paper approach and it got a little repetitive. So I started looking for alternatives to writing things down on a daily basis because I'm on my phone so much anyways. And I came across an app called any.do. So it's any do. Basically, it's really cool because you can set reminders in there and they'll pop up and it'll tell you when it's due. If you did it, all you have to do is hit the done box. If you haven't done it, you know, there's a later button or there's a you know, failed button kind of thing to where you didn't accomplish it. But it's cool because it, it holds me basically accountable for the certain things that need to be done every day. So you could apply your mailing, you could apply your Craigslist marketing, you could apply your county research to there. And every single day, it's gonna pop up on your phone and say, did you do this? And if you didn't, you know, you know why, you're not seeing the growth you want because you can look back at the end of the month and it will give you kind of an, an overview of your accomplishments and whether or not you achieved them or not. So it's great because it sets the bar for yourself and you determine what is essential on a daily basis. I, I love it. I love it. Um, cool. I use something similar. I actually have two apps that I use to get stuff done um, and create habits. The first app is streaks. Mm-hmm. So it's like the Jerry Seinfeld calendar um, you know, kind of brain hack where you don't want to break the chain. So you don't want to break the chain of your streak. So like I have these streaks that I want to just continually, you know, do whether it's, you know, working out for 20 minutes or meditating for 20 minutes or, you know, making a snide comment towards Eric Peterson for five minutes, something like that. I just want to break that chain and, and like, you know, and you get like that, that haptic feedback when you, when you do it on the phone. And then the other one is do D U E, which is, kind of similar except it's annoying where you'll put a a do like a to-do list but it will not go away it will continually remind you it is the most annoying thing ever and like it just like you you can snooze it but it still can continually remind you where like if i put something on my calendar um it'll pop up and then it'll go away right it won't continually remind me this thing won't stop nagging me and I love it. I love it. Um, so those are great tips. And then my other, I've got two tips for the week because we're talking about um, Facebook Live and, and doing videos, those 45 second videos. There's two ways right now that are really inexpensive to execute on this, right? Because if you want to do it, um, you can do it from your phone and do Facebook Live, but um, there's other, if you're going to do it from your computer, like you've got a nice webcam, um, and you want to have a little bit more production value, there's a site called Be Live, B-E-L-I-V-E dot TV. It's free. Um, it's really cool. Uh, and do that. And then I just bought Ecamm Live, E and then C-A-M-M-M-L-I-V-E. And this is like, uh, if you're really kind of geeky and you're into OBS or Wirecast um, and these sort of these streaming type video services, uh, OBS is free. Wirecast is 500 bucks. Ecamm Live was 15 bucks. So it's, it's a super affordable solution to doing, um, you know, live video uh, in Facebook and, and sharing your screen if you want to do that and those types of things. Because you can't do that on BeLive yet. Um, and you certainly can't do it on your Facebook app. So uh, a little bit more bells and whistles there. Anyways, uh, I thought this was a great roundtable. Was there anything else we, we should have talked about we didn't talk about? As far as building your list, Rachel? No, I feel good. This was helpful for me too. Were we good? Eric Peterson? Yeah, I think we're good. Chock full of value. Are you guys going to come back next week and do this? I think so. You know what we're going to talk about next week? Oh, yeah. All the boot camp love. 
Um, what I'll do, you know, we'll, we'll keep notes and see who did, who did the biggest deal at boot camp. Every, every boot camp, someone does a deal in real time. So this time we'll see like who did the best deal. Um, Tate, what was your best deal this, this week? Um, best deal. Last week we had a, obviously I was gone. We had a cash deal and then, you know, a property, I think we bought it for about 500 bucks. We're going to get a uh, hundred dollars a month for the next, uh, 48 months on it. So, you know, it's a bread and butter deal, right? Those are my favorite. After I all, those deals. Fun, that's what I like. Nice. Rachel Mueller, best deal yeah. this week? We had a, we had a great deal uh, at the end last week, actually. Uh, we had a default. And so we had already made our initial investment back. And then we just went ahead and resold it for terms and getting more on top of that. So not too shabby. I love it. I love it. And we got to get you into geekpay.io. So you yes. automate it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Seth Williams kind of screwed up blue pay for everybody. I love Seth Williams. If you're not checking out retipster.com, it's great. But um, the power of Seth can be overwhelming sometimes. So when he makes a recommendation, uh, you know, these, these little uh, companies get overwhelmed. Eric Peterson, best deal? Um, yeah, I guess uh, I sold... Um six properties uh they were adjoining properties um had uh That's probably true. i don't know about three grand in them uh sold it on terms for uh uh i don't even know what the percentage return is it's like um i think it's about 16 or seventeen thousand over six years i think that's a nice deal so, yeah, it's That's pretty good. Thing. Are you using geekpay.io? Uh, no. That one, we got to talk about that one because it, it needs to be separated out. But uh, yeah, I will. Okay. How's it going with that software, by the way? We're getting closer. Uh, yeah, it's, it's getting there. You know, there's still little bugs here and there, but uh, overall, it, it's going good. All right. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank the listeners again. Subscribe, rate, review the, the uh, podcast. Let us know how we're doing with the roundtable. Um, send us a screenshot of your, uh, of your review to support We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. All right. Are we ready to get geeky here? We're going to do it? Yeah, we're doing it. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Even Scott Todd would be like, that sucked. <laughs> we just got to get the timing right. Like, yeah, that's what we're off on. It's, I want to go like, let freedom ring. <laughs> I think I'm going to go buy a five or gig so you can just play it instead of us having to say this every time. That's, not a, bad, it's, that's not a bad idea at all. Hit the play button. Hit the play button. <laughs> With some all right, well, back, background music or something. Tate, you're in charge of the restaurants this yeah, weekend. Yeah, I, I got us mapped out. We're going to eat well this weekend. I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm very excited. You're going to take uh, Scott with you? Uh, you know, uh, if you can. <laughs> the thing is, whenever I choose, I like to try to put Scott uh, out of his comfort zone. But, mm -hmm. you know, he has been improving. It's going to take many, many years to kind of break that habit of him only wanting kind of steak and potatoes. But I think Mark and I can do it, don't you? I, I do. I, th I think we need to introduce, you know, a lot more food to him. And I was thinking we'd go Thai this weekend. Oh. I love Thai. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Well, thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll see everybody next week. All righty. Thanks, all right, guys. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.